is such a classic for most people because they identify with the fact that he expressed himself to God. Because in all of our life, in all that we do or say or feel or think or consider, God already knows it. You see, God is bigger than we are. That goes without saying. He created us. That goes without saying. He knows us. That goes without saying. And what we discover or we gradually begin to appreciate is that he's different than we are in a lot of ways because he lets us express to him our feelings so that we're in touch with what he already knows about us so that we can begin to realize that he does already know us. And so David let it all hang out. In his Psalms, he would express exactly how he felt. And for better, for worse, for right or for wrong, he always took it to the Lord in prayer. He took it to God in reality and expressed it to him for God to deal with. Because he knew that if he could turn it over to a righteous judge, that God does righteousness, then he had no fear of whatever the decision might be that God would render. So in Psalm 7, as we consider our devotional or devotional reading, that we put on and listen to what God would say to us as he is speaking in us and as he arranging around us and for us the circumstances of our life, we had gone through already verses 1 through 10, and now we're reading in verse 11 through the rest of it. And it says, God judges the righteous, and he is angry with the wicked every day. If he turn not, he will wet his sword. He hath bent his bow and made it ready. He hath also prepared for him the instruments of death. He ordained his arrows against the persecutors. Behold, he travaileth with iniquity, and hath conceived mischief, and brought forth falsehood. He made a pit, and digged it, and is fallen into the ditch which he made. His mischief shall return upon his own head, and his violent dealing shall come down upon his own plate, or pate, pate. I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness, and will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. Did you know that God judges you? No, you don't judge. You see, Jesus already said, judge not, lest you be judged. You are called to judge. God judges. David knew that. And, more than that, God is angry with the wicked every day. You see, he takes his judgment and he pours it into a vessel and contains it and saves it unto the day of wrath, when God shall pour out his righteous anger upon the world. And it shall come forth as he releases it from the vials that he has contained it therein and judges the world for sin. When he does, when he is poured out of his anger, then we shall see that he has kept a record of all that has transpired. But every day, in every way, whether for righteousness or for sin, we, along with the wicked, are judged. The wicked, though, what they will do is that they are violent and David recognized that there was a violent tendency within himself as well as within man that exemplifies itself outward in creating and causing what were meant to be implements for farming into implements of war. What meant to be for tilling the land became for killing the man. What should have been for causing a lifestyle that would be beneficial to the world is actually devastating and creating conflict in the world. And so David writes that he had bent his bow and he made it ready. And if you think about it, somebody that's ready to shoot, they're just, the wicked are always ready to take a shot at you. Because we're told that man has a tendency to either fight or flight. That the normal wicked man, which is the sinful man, which is the person you and I are before we're saved, which is the flesh that we live in, so it still has that capability that the normal 
tendency is that if you're confronted with violence, you're going to react in one of two ways. You're either going to fight it or flight it. You're going to run away or you're going to run at it and conquer it. Now, I disagree with that premise, but that's what's normally told. But if you think about it, the wicked are always looking for anything to set them off. There's some scapegoat that they could pick on. There's some person that they hate. There's some anger that they're mad about. There's something that's always wrong with what's going on in the world. And there's always something wrong with what they look around them and see because they can't see what's right. They can only stand there as though they had a bow pointed just waiting to shoot somebody or a gun cocked or their mouth ready to just snap at you. Have you ever been around anybody like that? Maybe you, maybe me, where you're just ready to fly off the handle? That's what the wicked are like. And he has prepared them, and because of their iniquity and because they are like that, they have in their mind always this idea, this concept, this distortion that's always creating what David calls mischief, but we would say conspiracy. There's always somebody out to get you. There's always somebody out there that's going to do this negative thing to you. You never can see something good. It's always bad. It's mischief. It's mischievous. They're going to do something. They're going to get you. The government is bad. The people are bad. The church is bad. The theology is bad. That saint is bad. Oh my God, everybody's bad. And there's no good except me and what people that agree with me are. And you see, when you are full of that, you bring forth falsehood. You create a lie. And that's what's happened in the church so often, is that they'll see something that might be an error or might be something off and a tangent, and then they'll list everybody that could possibly even be remotely associated with it and create this whole big long line of list of these are the unacceptables. I'm sorry, doesn't matter that they were saved. We used to think they were saved, but now we don't think they're saved. Oh, like we can make that decision. So God says, hey, don't go there. That's the wickedness. That's the mischief. That is the violent person who is portraying in their thought life, in their actions, in their words, in their expressions, in the fact that they're standing there with a bow, in the fact that they have the gun cocked, in the fact that their mouth is spewing falsehood. Because it's not true. The person that does that is digging a hole, and they're falling in it. They're digging a ditch, and they're walking in it. They don't realize that they're getting deeper and deeper and making the boundaries that they want to be in narrower and narrower as they can only see that which they've dug for themselves to be in. And in the end, their own ditch becomes their grave. David says that his mischief, his words of condemning someone, judging someone, convicting someone, con causing someone to be labeled, mislabeled, attacked, it will come back upon them. It will be that which is put upon themselves because they will be judged accordingly as they have judged. It will be a tragedy because they will have proven the violence in their heart has become the violence of their nature. But David says, instead of that, Rather than that, because I've trusted in the Lord, because I've, I've sought His righteousness, even though I know that these things go on, and I see them, I will not participate in them. I will not become like them. What I will do, what I have chosen is, I will praise the Lord according to His righteousness, not the standard that man has set, not the standard the mischief has set, not the standard the conspiracist has set, not the standard the violent man has set, not the standard that religion has set, not the standard that of any other kind except for according to the Lord and His righteousness, which was given to us. How? What is His righteousness? It's the mercy and grace and love that God poured out upon the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. And that is the righteousness which is imputed unto us, not because of works that we have done, but according to His mercy He saves us. That's the righteousness. That's what David was given. David was guilty of sin, and we know it. He was a murderer. He was a violent man, and he knew it, and he admitted it, and he failed in it. Because in that, when he praised the Lord, he sang 
praises unto the Lord Most High, for he knew God's heart. He knew that God is love. And he knew that in God he could find mercy and grace. What will you be today? Full of the Lord's righteousness and sing praise? Or will you be singing the failures of man and the religious ideas you have and the pits you're digging and the conspiracies you're saying and all the negative qualities that the wicked do? I hope and I pray that the words that David spoke and sang and spoke of being coming and changing into what God wanted for him also apply to you as I know I see them in me.